Ooh. Way before y'all decided to start hating on Drake Ooh. just for attention. I led that charge. You did it when there was no when attention. When there was no attention. Damn, you did it when it just hurt you. When I was just doing it to f with people. Yes. You thumb with eyebrows. You know, <laughs> how you, there's three sexual orientations, gay, straight, and Drake. I was doing that just to piss him off. Yeah. I'm not a contrarian, though. I'm just, it's, it's really, maybe I am, but I don't mean to be. The fact that you just what? said you're not a contrarian <laughs> after saying you're a contrarian is the most contrarian thing that's ever been said. Quite the contrary. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the contrary. <laughs> Charlemagne the God. Andrew Schultz. We are the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Back for another week of Brilliant Idiot. This uh, Today's episode is brought to you by Squarespace. From websites and online stores to marketing tools and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful online presence and run your business. There are no hidden fees or price hikes, and all websites are optimized for mobile. And it's so simple. Start with a design template and use drag and drop tools to make it your own. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase. Let's start the show. Hezzy! What's up, baby? Mm. 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 I need a sip of water, too. Mm. Fucking it over here choking. <sighs> Ate that goddamn protein, protein cookie before we started the show, man. Shit. How was your week? <laughs> we had to walk up four flights of stairs. I know, I know. The elevator, we gotta get the elevator fixed. You know, it's uh some things that we gotta we gotta figure out over here, man. How was your week, man? Dude, I had crazy takeout the other day. What you mean? Like food? Yeah. What you mean create what what, what kind of takeout? Sugandis. I had <laughs> Yo, I've been getting God all week, yo. Let me tell you something about brilliant yeah. listeners, man. Because I've been, like, be getting God all week. Like, I've been getting God all week. Yo, somebody got me at the Mental Wealth Expo so no! crazy. No! So fucking crazy. No! Oh, what they man. say? Because, you know, it's at the Mental Wealth Expo, so he comes up to yeah. me, we talking. We talking about something, something. And he goes, yeah, man, I, I tried to get in touch with, um, he said, I, said, I know, he said, I met one of your interns named uh, Licker. I'm like, liquor? Liquor who? Yeah, come on. I know, that was so I obvious. Know, he was like, liquor these! No! <laughs> <laughs> now, but that's fucked it, because at the Mental Health Expo, like, everybody's being vulnerable. You want to be there for them. So you trust everything they yeah. say. Yeah. Comedy show, bro. Oh, my God. You know what I realized, man? I realized that People have been listening to me so long. They know I don't take too much serious. Yeah, yeah. They know I would much rather laugh than anything. Yeah. And so most conversations are that. Yeah, yeah. I'm actually uncomfortable when the conversation's way <laughs> too deep. There's yeah. nothing we can't talk about that you're not going to tell me a joke can't come out of this in some way, shape, or form. Fair enough, fair enough. And he got me. He was like, look at these nuts. In front of people or it was just It one was on me, one? my wife, and security. Oh, that's fire. <laughs> oh, that's fire. And all I can do is laugh, man. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? So salute to him. And the dude, oh, I, I, I had my dude from Hip Hop DX too. I think his name's Jeremy. Look that up, Taylor. Jeremy from Hip Hop DX, the white dude. He got me on the red carpet or the, or the green carpet of the BET Yeah, award. I remember you telling me. But us. yeah, they, they, this shit is epidemic. Like, this shit is not new. Yeah. Why are y'all acting like these jokes are new? No, but it's back. It's definitely back, it's man. Back, bro. It's back, bro. And I'm glad back. it's back. I it's used to so... be good at it. I'm not good at that shit. I'm not good at catching it. And I'm not good at doing it. Because you were too excited when you do it. <laughs> I'm going to just start doing it. Fuck it. What do you mean? I'm going to be like, man, you heard Drake's new album? And somebody be like, nah, Drake these nuts just because. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Fuck that. I need to get my get back, man. These motherfuckers <laughs> beat me up out here with this shit. Yeah, that's my guy. That's him right there. That's oh. him. No, not him. Yeah, that's him. <laughs> that's him. Jeremy. <laughs> that motherfucker got that motherfucker got me. He good. got you good. Huh? Oh my god, we need he that got video. Me good. We need that video. Nah, he got me good. He got me good. What else did happen this week, man? But you tell me about the uh, the mental health expo. Oh, the mental health expo is amazing. Mental health expo is amazing. My third annual mental health expo, man. It's salute to my guy Carson Daly. You know, Carson he came through. Yeah, Carson was there. Me and Carson opened it up. You know, Carson is a big mental health advocate, man. And, you know, he deals with anxiety and depression and, you know, grief, you know, because he lost his parents really young. Mm. And it's just like the beautiful thing about the Mental Wealth Expo and what I tell people when they ask me what I want people to learn from the Mental Wealth Expo is simple. I want you to learn early what I learned late, mm. you know. And I just want you to get started on your healing journey. That's all it's for. It's literally, we have a bunch of panels all throughout the day. We got breakout rooms for people to go do yoga and meditation, stuff like that. We got a bunch of different booths with a bunch of different resources. Mm. And the best part about it is free. Because I don't give a fuck what nobody says, man. If you say that you want to provide a service to the community and you say you're giving something to the community and you want people to learn about a certain thing, 
find a way to do it for free, especially if you already got it. Mm. If you already eaten and you tapped in, you know, with different corporations and things like that, how come you can't find a way to give services to these people for free? Yeah. So, you know. I can't wait until next year and just not even just next year. Me and Styles P was talking about this because Styles P was on one of the panels too. He was on the uh, the, 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 the healing in the spotlight panel. Okay. You know, just different people who are in the industry who are trying to heal in the spotlight. And we were talking about how like we got to start bringing this to the people. Mm. You know what I mean? Like he got like pharmacy for life and juices for life. So now you bring like two therapists to juice for life, pharmacy for life, and you just tell people in the community to come. Mm. Just pull up, you know, because nine times out of ten, all you just need somebody to talk to, and you know, get you get you started on the right path. So, absolutely. What's his pharmacy for life? I never heard that. One. Pharmacy for life. He got juices for life, which is just the juice. Yeah. No, no, pharmacy no. for life is herbs and oils and oh, so natural homeopathic natural. medications. What? What the fuck? Why he got to be all that? <laughs> this what, what's up, man? He's a little bit of a homeopath, if you ask me. I don't know. The guy's a little bit of a homeopath. I mean, Styles P, your favorite rapper's favorite, favorite rapper. rapper. I'm just saying, man, he, oh. he likes... There was what? a time in my life I used to listen to D-Block and I just used to want to stab somebody with something sharp, That's yo. fire, bro. You I'm know glad. what I'm saying? Yeah, that's I, had to, great. I couldn't listen to fucking the locks back. I had to stop. What I'm was like, your yo. song that made you want to be most violent? Oh my God! Um, the one, uh, da, 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 breathe easy, breathe easy. Uh, with, with Jay, is like, um, now if you know Jay, I've never been a brother to front. I be in L.A. wearing any colors I want. Oof. Rock guns like shirts, Glock under the pump, and uh. I put something hot in any one of you chumps. Uh. And I know a few of you wanna get my watch, but it'll be a funeral if you get my watch. It uh. ain't nothing you can do to stop the locks. Well, run up in the gun show, cop the top shelf. Oof. The crack game is dead. All they want is weed now. Bitches that I went to school with a C now. You know Jay, cocky, ball head, light brown. Something, something, man. My game look like something, something. To all you little jaders for the thousandth time, I don't recall. Something, something to write in your rhymes. And even if you did see me coming in and out of your house, there's no way she can have a baby out of her mouth or some shit like that. <laughs> wow. That's a fire bar. <laughs> that shit was that bar, is a fire Joe. bar. They, they was just man. so finesse with it. Just make you want to cut something, man. <laughs> Damn. All right, Taylor, let's play your little game. Because we want to play a your game? little game, man. What is it? By any memes, by all memes necessary? Man, let's just get to it, man. Did you listen to Drake's album? Um, Not in its entirety. Pieces of it. Did you listen to Drake's album, Alex? I got through half. Okay. It's pretty long. We don't have to listen to a whole album to judge it. Okay. <laughs> what the fuck yeah. is wrong with y'all? It's 2023. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. With thoughts? I mean, I was saying this on Flagrant, like, the pressure of being on the top is you have to be number one or it's a failure. Every single time. There's only one direction you can go. That's an insane amount of pressure to be for about a decade. He's going to be number one. 450,000. Of course sold. he's going to be number one. But I think what happens is when people are on top, we start looking for reasons why they shouldn't be. And when people are coming up, we start ignoring the reasons why they're not on top and looking for reasons why they should be. So it's a way more difficult position to be on top because it needs to be perfection because everybody's looking for the little cracks. Yeah. They're looking for what's wrong with it. So... I think a lot of people are going out there and they're like, okay, why is this song not good enough? Why does this one suck? If he was a new artist that just dropped this album, everybody would be like, yo, it's, this it's dude album. is next. So, yeah, I'm a little hesitant. I'm a little hesitant. Now, most people don't understand that pressure because they've never been in that situation. Never been good at shit. Exactly. <laughs> so it's easy for them to just knock, right? Because Absolutely. they don't know what it's like to be on top. Mm. And also, when you're on top, you can't cry about it. Right, and, because and, nobody relates to you at all. There's five people that ever been on top. That's right, and it's easy for you to knock because you've been tired of seeing this person win for so long. Now, let me tell y'all what I've learned about myself, and I have to talk to my therapist about this. Let's do it. Something's to totally about, wrong with me. Okay, in what way? Because I've been consistently hating on Drake for 13 years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not 13 years. It was hate in the beginning. Then it became fair criticism, you know, in, 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 in latter like years. like Eileen. 
Huh? I lean back so you get something on this. <laughs> God damn, you got me with that. Oh, that God. was sitting there good, bro. That was good. That was sitting there good, bro. You know what gave me that one? Your shoes were silly. <laughs> so and I was like, ooh, I think I could do something with lean. I lean? Oh, oh God. God. Okay, go, go, go. Here's my thing. Uh, <laughs> Damn, bro. Now that everybody is criticizing Drake's album, the way I feel like I've always criticized his You want to defend him. I have. I've, I'm like, no. I feel like the criticism is unfair. That's what, that, I'm like, <laughs> okay. Devil's advocate to die. Devil's I, advocate to die. It. This is how I really feel. Yes. I'm looking at all of this, and I'm like, I feel like this criticism is unfair, because to your point, this is just another Drake album. Sorry. He could have titled this album more of the same. So what is different? <laughs> what is different than this? What he's giving you now than mm -hmm. what he gave you last year mm -hmm. with the twenty one like Savage? You like the last one? What happened with the cert? You cert it made him the biggest board. artist in the world. Come on! Even when people were saying they didn't like, honestly, never mind. Stop Listen, it. I was like, yo, it's elevator music, but I didn't mean that as a diss. I meant that as if I'm in a luxury hotel like the SLS Beverly Hills and I walk in, yeah. I can hear this stuff playing. Right. You know what I mean? I can get on the elevator and hear this album playing. I actually like. Ties that bind from Honestly Never Mind. I actually like Sticky from Honestly Never Mind. Mm -hmm. I can say that wholeheartedly. Okay? Yeah. So all I'm simply saying is, why? Where were y'all when I was hating on Drake 13 years ago? <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Where were y'all when I was hating on Drake Honestly, 13 years I'm ago? I'm more concerned about all the people you celebrate. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, if Charlotte's riding for you, it might be a problem, bro. <laughs> it really might be a problem. Are you liking all these people just to be different? No, I'm not. I do think that this criticism is unfair because I don't know. It's, it's, it's everything you said. This guy's been on top for so long yeah. that people are just... And, and by the way, it happens to everybody in any industry. Human you know? beings don't like when someone's in charge or someone's on top. We for, have a for natural, too long. Yeah, we have a natural primal inclination to drag them down. I, I mean, don't. No, you, I know maybe you say you don't as an individual. I'm just saying, like, there's a reason our system of government in America, right, which was something that rejected royalty, where one person was in charge all the time. Yeah. We had a new system of government where it was like, nah, someone could be in charge for a few years, and then we're going to yank that motherfucker out of power right. and put another one and yank him. And what do we do with every single president? That's right. We exalt him, and then four years later, we're like, he ain't shit. That's right. I'm still broke, right. et cetera. This is what we do. We love the underdog. We love the come up yes. story. And we even love when you come up. But don't come up too much. Oh, don't and separate yourself. And you've never yourself. seen anything like this. You've never seen a guy who's been this dominant mm -hmm. in rap for this long. The only other person that we've seen like that is Jay-Z. Mm -hmm. And y'all did the same thing to Hove. Of course. I'm 45 years old. I remember. I was there. Mm -hmm. I remember when Hove retired after the Black Album. When he came back with Kingdom Come, everybody was like, oh, this shit is whack. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You need to retire. You know, Dipset was coming at him. Everybody, like, everybody had something to say about Hove. And he just put his head down and kept doing the work. Kept pushing. And I expect Drake to do the same exact thing. He's going to put his head down and keep doing the work. Now, the only criticism I think is valid, people who are saying they want something deeper. We said this last week on Brilliant Idiots. Yep. We had this conversation last said, week on Brilliant exactly Idiots. What does that mean, though, deeper? That's what I'm trying to understand. Like because his version of a 444. No, but, no, that's not deeper, though. I would argue that that is... Mature, evolved. Yeah, Yeah, but what if he's not at that stage? Exactly. He don't have a wife. J he has a kid, but he don't have a wife. Maybe, he's not yeah. having these long-lasting, loving relationships. And he's not in his mid-40s. Yeah, he's out like there four, four, knocking them down, we're at, partying, yes. buying real estate, yes. making fucking TV shows. That's what the musical will reflect. We're, we're, yes, we're acting like 444 didn't come out when Jay-Z was in his mid-40s. Now, a better comparison is... Mr. Morale and the Big Step was, but don't act like y'all were riding for that album when Kendrick dropped it. I love that album. Mm. I'm on record saying that is going to go down as one of the most important albums in hip hop history. You know what y'all said when that album came out? Oh man, it's too deep, man. Mm. I, ain't, I ain't there yet. I'm not there yet, yo. I'm not ready for exactly. that. Exactly. That's exactly what they're going to say. Or if you know J. Cole puts something out, right? What's the criticism? Oh, when, when Cole, we'll see, we'll see, Cole, Cole's naming his next album The Fall Off. You know why? Because he know what y'all motherfuckers going to do. He's mm. on top of it already. He know what y'all going to do. But I'm just saying, like, there's going to be a criticism for everything. And I think it's more of a function of, like, where he is in the game. Yes. And less of a function of the art he's putting out. Yes. Right? And But here's the other thing. You can't be upset at the criticism 
I mean, you can be whatever you feel, but like you have, you understand that is the cost of greatness. 100%. The cost of being Michael Jordan is everybody's gonna be going, Magic was better, Bird was better, this guy ain't the greatest. The cost of being LeBron right now is you going, Steph is actually better. He the is. Exactly. <laughs> the cost, right? The cost is always people trying to say why you shouldn't be exalted and in the position that you are in. That is the cost that you have to pay when you're on top. And if you're not willing to pay that price, then you won't be in that seat for a long time. You're absolutely right. And that's why when I say the criticism is unfair, it's not the criticism of the music. I think the critique of him personally and all of that is a little bit like, all right, guys, come on now. All right, but leave. what are they saying personally? That that he's not growing up and yeah. he's hanging around. Yo, you don't no. even care if he's growing up or not. Like, I, I are really you really don't. sitting at home going nobody like, cares. Nobody oh, cares. Nobody man, cares. I, really, I sure wish that Drake had a loving relationship right. right now. Nobody cares. Because the second he nobody was in that shit, you'd be cares. like, man, you soft-ass motherfucker. That's right. Here you are loving and singing. Well, Some, somebody said to me over the weekend. There are some people that are saying that. Somebody said to me over the weekend, they said, uh, Man, I ain't never seen, you know, I've never seen this kind of critique on an album. I've never seen this many people not liking an album. I said, yeah, it's because you've never seen an artist like Drake. This is the, when you, he's yeah. in, he's, he, this is rare air mm. that he's in. And what you said about Braun is absolutely right. Drake and Braun get critiqued the exact same way. Bro, and, and, and you yeah. never will appreciate either one of them because we keep comparing them to spirits. Michael Jordan's a spirit at this point. Yeah. Mm. Jay-Z is a spirit at this point. You, you know also got to, you don't confuse people's addiction uh, to attention with legit criticism. Like, there are people that are addicted to attention. Come on, and, talk about it, shows. And then, and then the way that they get the attention is by having the take that most people will gravitate towards. The Drake Be economy is real. Yes, of course. Me meaning, meaning if I have a negative take about Drake, it's, it's going to get retweeted, it's going to get posted. Absolutely. If you go, oh my God, what a talented dude, it's amazing, this guy's been on top of the game for 10 years. That's right. And the motherfucker got bars, and he can sing. Nobody's clicking view. Nobody's right. clicking watch. That's the right. problem is, and maybe it's a problem, it's a good problem to have, is that once you get famous, there are views in criticizing you. And people will take those views. So you got to be careful. If there are people right. that actually have legitimate claims or they just have a legitimate addiction to attention and are willing to say whatever will provide that attention. And don't question me on that because I was doing it 13 years ago, Ooh. way before y'all decided to start hating on Drake Ooh. just for attention. I led that charge. You did it when there was no when attention. When there was no attention. Damn, you did it when it just hurt you. When I was just doing it to fuck with people. Yes. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> when people I was like, who's Drake? And you were like, exactly. You thumb with eyebrows. You know, how you, there's three sexual orientations, gay, straight, and straight. I was doing that just to piss him off. Wow. Didn't even know the guy. You did it for the love of the game. For the love of the fucking game. Not for no views. Not for no, <laughs> no views. You just for the to love of the game. Dreams. For the love of, you know what? Love that, the for the love of the game. He looks like, you know what? Now this is the perfect foil. Ooh. Canadian. Biracial. Hmm. Oh, this is easy work. <laughs> you know, that's what, what you were thinking at the time. At the time, mm. then this motherfucker grows to be the biggest goddamn rapper <laughs> in the world. <laughs> yeah. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch, Charlemagne. Why? <laughs> by the way, by the way, and it's so funny, salute to my guys, uh, Top Dog and uh, Punch. Uh, I went to go see Scissor's show um, this past Friday, and we was all in the suite, and Top was reminding me and telling my wife, you remember when this, this motherfucker told us Kendrick wasn't a star? <laughs> I say, I didn't say Kendrick wasn't a star. Well, you said he didn't look like a star. He didn't yeah. at the time. So all I'm simply saying is, I'm equal opportunity across the board. It wasn't like I was just picking on people. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't just picking on one individual. I had a cultural critique, critique of everybody who was in the game at the time. Hmm. I never critiqued Cole because Cole was from the Carolinas. So you protected him. Bias, like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, right. What's the problem here? Why? I just love how honest you are about your bullshit. It's so great. Oh, oh, oh I can't be honest about what, your bullshit. What, what about, <laughs> so good. What about huh? P.D. Pablo? Legend. <laughs> you. <laughs> what you talking about? I take my shirt off right now and start spinning it around my goddamn head. Okay, PD Pablo shouted out North and South Carolina. All right, Woo! shout out to PD Goddamn Pablo. So that's really all it takes is that Drake really never shouted out the Carolinas. If he shouted out the Carolinas, you think you would have had his back? No, you know what's interesting? Debbie Dev put me on the two things. Debbie Dev put me on the Kendrick. I never forget it. This mm -hmm. is two thousand seven. I don't, I don't even remember what project it was. It wasn't Section 80. It was something before that. She put me on the Kendrick. She put me on the Nipsey. She put me on the Glasses of Malone. She put me on the Bishop Lamont. 
strong arm steady gang. So I liked, I literally did like all of those individuals from the West Coast. But like most things, I don't know why I was wired like this back then. If I heard something get too much praise, I did not want to be involved with it. So even though I liked Kendrick a lot, when people started like praising him as the next guy and everything else, this is this is a form of attention. I'm seeking. like, yo, he. This is a form of attention seeking. Yep. Does not look like a star. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. Yep. But this is good that we're coming <laughs> to this. Call it out. The mental <laughs> wealth experts you're right, continue. You're right, you're right. He, but this is good that you're, you're having right. an honest moment. I think we all are guilty of this. You're absolutely right. Sometimes it, our our need for attention forces us to say things that maybe we don't exactly believe. And it's not, it wasn't even just attention. It was just like, why? Okay, it was like I like him. But come on, guys. Everybody relax. But guess what? Kendrick really was everything everybody was saying he was. Yes. And even deep down, I knew that. Yes. But there was something in me at the time that would not allow me to say it. Now, I have no problem celebrating him. Yes. Like, and, 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 and I'd say he's the greatest of the generation, period. Charlamagne. Same thing with Drake. I did this as well. Okay with a guy named Donald Trump, and everybody had an intervention on this fucking podcast with me because you guys thought that I was actually serious. You weren't serious? <laughs> <laughs> you weren't serious? <laughs> oh, shit. Everybody was like, this guy's the worst, this guy's a Nazi, this guy's the worst human being on earth. I knew that, though. And there was a little part I of me that was like- I always say Andrew's a natural contrarian. Yes. Yeah. I always said that. But I think you need to have that in your brain to be a comedian. I'm not a contrarian, though. I'm just, it's, it's really, maybe I am, but I don't mean to be. The fact that you just what? said you're not a contrarian <laughs> after saying you're a contrarian is the most contrarian thing that's ever been said. Quite the contrary. <laughs> <laughs> Quite the contrary. <laughs> Yo, you know what's so crazy? Even with Drake, I'll never, I'll never forget who put me on the Drake. Who put you on? Sasha Del Valle. Wow. Salute to the salute to my good sister Sasha Del Valle. This was when, this had to be 2010. And when did So Far Gone come out? No, yeah. I don't remember. Huh? 11? All right, maybe it was 2011. I just remember, I remember her letting me hear So Far Gone. Sasha liked So Far Gone so much that I refused to accept how good that music was. <laughs> 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 I was like, he's all right. What is this? And you know the record I really loved off that album? What's that? Successful. Mm. And that other shit, uh, brand new. Was it brand new? I don't know. I think it was brand new. But my point is, being that she was so on it, and then I started hearing about this project so goddamn much. I just got that. For all the dogs. <laughs> I just got that. Being that, being that. Who I put that up there? That's good. Is that you? <laughs> no, That's no, no, good. Shoot. So being Jeff, that, being well that done, everybody Jeff. liked that project so much, I had to find something that you hated about it. Because if you notice, what does that say about you? Listen, when you notice, when I go, when you go back to my critique, I never did like the singing though. That's a fact. I never really, I never liked the singing, but I always loved when he rapped. But when you go back and you look at my early critique of Drake, it was never about music. It was about the color of his skin. That's it. You fucking you racist. You waffle colored Negro. Oh you done what I write. It was never about the music. Only thing I would ever say about the music is I don't like when he sings. I like when he raps. Why be the next? Why try to be the next Trey songs when you could be the next Jay Z? Mm. That was it. Everything else was just straight insults. But now, now that you're a a mature adult mm -hmm. that has reflected on your life and your motivations and your emotions and your experiences, now how do you feel? How do I feel about who, Drake? Yeah. Well, it's different now, right? Because I've got a lot more information. And first of all, I'm going to always respect consistency and longevity. Mm. It's hard to be on My top God. for a while, man. My, no, no, and it's been, you've the never pressure. seen no run like this in hip hop. The pressure. Yeah, so the I'm pressure all, breaks people. That's, that's right. why you see these guys use drugs. It's not like, it's not like they were drug addicts before a lot of times. They're coping with the anxiety of success. Yes. You see this in Hollywood. Yes. You see this in music. You see this in anything. I imagine you can see it in politics. They just have to numb themselves to the anxiety that's coming with the, the massive weight of this responsibility, letting all these people down that, what is it called, the imposter syndrome that they might feel, maybe they're not as good as they think that, as people think they are, and can they live up to those unrealistic expectations? And I think music To manage is that for 10 years is fucking unbelievable. Phenomenal, and I think music is therapeutic for him, and that's why even when I see him doing this type of stuff, right, 
I think he's doing, he's keeping it light on purpose mm. for all of those reasons that you're talking about. I think that over time, we're going to get that deep music from Drake. And then they'll hate on it. You know why it's impossible not to? Because he's really an artist. Yeah. So it's, an, it's impossible for an artist with his just, skill set yeah. to not do that eventually. I just hope, I just hope he or any artist does it when they want to do it. Not when the critics are pushing them in that but shows, direction. He's already done it. I know, I know. He was but, doing it early. I know, but yeah. he was the vulnerable emotion. That's why I was giving him shit. He was the vulnerable emotional. I think he's the most emotionally tapped in. And he was doing anybody. all that early. Yeah, yeah. It's just now, maybe, yo, maybe the industry hardened him a little bit. I guess, I, I guess what I'm saying is just like create because what you because of what you authentically want to put out, mm -hmm. not because of what the critics are saying. And I think a lot of artists you know, that that want praise and validation often gravitate towards what the critics are saying about them and then try to satisfy that. But you're never going to satisfy them, ever. Never. Have, the only way you could satisfy yourself is by creating authentically. And, and, if, if, and if, if that's what he's doing... Then that's beautiful. I'm, I have gives no a problem fuck with what anybody it. else says. If this is the album that you want to put out, the only time you should feel bad about an album not being well-received is if it's not the music that you want to put out, then you feel horrible. When you're just trying to appease the critics yeah. and they still hate it, you're like, this wasn't even my shit and they still don't fuck with me? Fuck that. And you know what's so amazing about this? I heard two songs off this album. How many did you hear, Schultz? I haven't listened yet. <laughs> you haven't even listened? <laughs> Boy, who can fuck with the idiot? Yo, <laughs> no, I heard greatest, two bro. songs. We the greatest. Two. I heard <laughs> fucking the Sexy Red and Scissor record and the goddamn record with Cole. I ain't heard shit I heard else, the record man. with Cole and I heard Bendo. Those are the only two. I don't even know what the fuck that is. Bend over so you can take this thing. Come on. Come on. Come on. Son. 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 I didn't hear how do I know it's not a song called son, Bendo? Son, son, <laughs> the fuck? Can you get that clip? I haven't even heard the album. Come on, yo. Yeah, You're not taking you. nothing serious, Taylor. He's been emotional, right? Your hair looks great like this. Thanks. What is different? I just put it up in a bun. You didn't add any? No. It looks fantastic like this. <laughs> You're so not pulling the mic towards you. Why are you leaning over like that, yo? Um, okay. So, him being emotional back then. Fantastic hair. <sighs> Can I ask my question? Thank you. I appreciate thank, yeah, it. Yeah, just say thank you. I said There's thank no you. I said thank you originally. Like Philly so, women can't take compliments. Oh they really can't. Unless they come with a cheesesteak. What do you mean? She lied? Wait, you got extensions in? I lied about what? She he's saying that it's not all your My hair was hair. like this last week though, so I'm assuming. It's I'm just it. saying the style looks great on you. Thank you. It's You're very welcome. Look. It's just so cool. Thank you. Um, yeah. If he was emotional back Hater? then. No, well, you asked if she added any. I hate you. That's name. added here. <laughs> That's the deluxe version. <laughs> Can I ask my question? Yeah. You got a question? If Drake was emotional back then. Yeah. That wasn't deep for y'all? Like, he was talking about his emotions. I just said that. That's what I'm okay, that's, so that's, why are you saying, why are people saying I want him to be deeper if he's been deep before? Oh, they, no, they- they, they moving they, away from being Yeah, they, they got that 20 year, they, they thought, if, if you was like that at 20, what, what are they expecting to you be at 35, 36 years old or whatever It's just it people looking for someone to criticize. This is bullshit. They but, don't give a fuck. But what Drake is really showing y'all is he just can make fucking music whenever he wants to make music. If, if, if he wants to, you know, Tap in. That's the other thing that that's kind of crazy. Why are we mad that he's tapping in with younger artists? Yo, not even that. Like, you still listen to old Drake. Right. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, old Drake yeah. comes on, you still singing, you at the yeah. concert, you singing. So yeah. it's not like you don't like that old music. You still feel whatever emotions is in the old music. I, it's, it's, it's bullshit. I guess the, you, the one critique I have is that he has such a talent for bars. Like, he spits, and it's like, I didn't get none of that. Like, he's barely rapping on this. Oh, album. I heard the 8 a.m. record. That's probably the 8 a.m. in Charlotte. Yeah. He rapping on that shit. Yeah, but I don't. I don't even think he, that's on the album. Yes, I think he, oh, I thought he just threw that out. I don't know. <laughs> but I, <laughs> I'm gonna listen to it though. No, but as I'm, I'm saying, it, there's it. not much rapping on the album, and that's the thing. It's like I was looking forward to hearing him rap, and I didn't get that. When has Drake rapped a lot on the album? No, albums? but he'll give you both. This is like really like mainly an R&B album. Everything I heard was him rapping. And those are the three songs. You happen to hear really? the three songs of him rapping. Yeah, but way, you only listen to half. 
Yeah, because it's I can't even get through the rest. Oh, that's hate, bro. My only critique is that he should have just gave Sexy Red that goddamn record. That shit's so hard. Which one? Hands on your knees, <laughs> hands on your knees. That shit's so goddamn hard. She kills it. Adonis kills Let it. Let your pussy breathe. <laughs> Let your pussy breathe? Ooh. How do you do that? That should have just been Sexy Red and Scissors record. <laughs> How do you pussy breathe? And, and by the way, let that be Sexy Red and Scissors record, we written just by Drake, whatever it is. That shit is great. Are we just moving past that concept what? of pussy breathing? <laughs> you don't wear no panties. Oh, yeah, God. Yeah, that's what it, it is, it. right, Taylor? Huh? Let yes. your pussy breathe. I identify as a person with a pussy. <laughs> <laughs> <What>? <laughs> <laughs> I do. I'm I'm good, yo. I'm done. I'm done. I corrupted Charlotte. Yes. You know what I mean? This is crazy. I don't know what happened. Charlotte went full frat boy. I don't know what's happened in, in the last fucking six months, but this guy is too much. He's too much. He just says he identifies as a person with a pussy. What color is it? Is it pink? Pink. You got that pink pussy? I'm out of town. I'm talking with my rounds. <laughs> Question though, if you're Drake, what do you do? Can I just ask one question? Yeah. <laughs> if is your pussy holding its breath now? Then. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've heard it. You've heard it when it gasps for air. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, dude. <laughs> what is that? A quiff? <laughs> a queef. That's a quiff. Yes. A chief queef. Why are you saying? Why are you call? What are you call it? A quiff. A chief queef. A quiff. I thought it was queef. Why are you call it queef? Chief queef. 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 Same thing. Just a pronunciation thing. If you're Drake, do you care about any of this criticism? No, I mean, okay, last question just about the pussy thing. Is, <laughs> have you ever had a queef before? Yes. Okay, is it, do you dap up your man afterwards like he did it or? No. It's just, what happens is this like, especially if he's pounding it, it's just a lot oh, of. Damn, Yuck, Taylor. Taylor. God damn, your mama God, listens to this podcast. Yeah. What the fuck you, is wrong with you, sister, man? You're yo. You God can't say damn. he's pounding Jesus it. Jesus Christ, man. Your pounding dad is alive. It? the fuck is wrong with you, Holy man? Holy moly. Can you hear Imagine this shit? You can't pound a pig What like the that? fuck, Taylor? I hope somebody send this shit to your parents. I'm not even yo. gonna lie. That shit was wild. Yeah. We need to mark that. Yo. Yeah, that is crazy. Yeah. We need to mark that. Part that is of the podcast. crazy. If he's pounding, yeah, what does that mean? Mark pounding. that so I know exactly what the time stamp is telling mom to listen. Yeah. That was crazy. What does pounding now. even mean, though? God damn. I'm just. What is, can, what is pounding it? Because I need to know if I pounded it. Jesus Christ. Usually... Can you pound it from the bottom? <laughs> Started from the bottom. Now we queer. <laughs> Wait, can you pound it from the bottom? Can I be on my back it? pounding it? Uh, usually this happens for me, like from the back. But Taylor, <laughs> what? You're saying give us right around the corner. Wait, How so you gonna explain it to your daddy? Spiritual journey. So what I remember about it is that, that doesn't sound like no spiritual journey. That's not like you came from pound town yesterday. No, yes, it does sound no, like that. Yes, it had, does. I haven't had sex in months. In months, what would you tell your dad? You should say never. She said, I've Dude. never had sex. Me and my dad have real talks. Can oh, do you tell him that you get pounded? Pounded. The fuck yeah, out? Then, yeah, how real is the talk? I don't think he gets that. Don't tell real. me you have real talk. That. Like, Dad, guess what? what? I got say? pounded Monday. Well, I would never. Say Why that. would you? What if he asked you? You don't say positions, do you? No. What if he's, I heard no. you on this podcast talking about getting pounded? Yeah, pounding is crazy. Pounding? Don't y'all like the sound of that? No. <laughs> I'm out of town, thugging with my say, rounds. My pussy pink, my booty whole brown. Uh. Why do y'all do this? What's, what's the gunshots all the time? Bang, 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 bang. It's weird. Well, it's weird that y'all do that. Why is that weird? This has not If you're a drink, do you care? I care just enough that people are talking about it. One thing that he did I thought was interesting, he posted the criticism that he was getting for Take Care. Uh, so let me ask you. Let me ask you all this question. You're a comedian. You get it. I'm a radio personality. Alex, you don't care what you put on your body because you clearly just <laughs> subscribe to your own rules. My point with <laughs> what, what I'm saying is, if you listen to the opinions of others, you won't be you. So if Drake would have listened to all of those people back then, yes. telling him, you know, about take care, he wouldn't have gave you. If you're reading this, it's too late and. What else came out after that? Nothing was the same. And you got to be the captain of the you ship. You got to be the captain of your ship. You can't continue to listen to all of this criticism because what you can motherfuckers tell you? better than the people, man. Yes. What can they tell you when you've been on top for 13 plus the years? People ain't creating the music. 
They're riding the wave. Riding so the what you were saying wave. before, you got to be the wave? You, you got to be the wave, not yeah. a surfer. That's you know it. what I'm saying? So it's like, yo, this week alone, and I told y'all this is going to happen last week on Idiots, the whole Billboard charts is going to damn near be Drake. Mm -hmm. I think they said 17 of the top 20 songs is going to be Drake. Bravo. And he's doing 450,000 in a week. Mm. So who are you supposed to listen to? And I'm not saying, like, I believe numbers don't tell the whole tale, but clearly there's people fucking with the project. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So what are you, so what are you, what are you supposed to tell people? What am I supposed to tell myself? And those songs that y'all said was whack, I'm performing these shit in front of tens of thousands of people every night, and they singing it word for word. Yeah. So who am I supposed to listen to? Yeah. I don't think people are saying it's whack. It's just they didn't get what they were expecting. Like he was what like, "What were you expecting?" Like when you this hear, this sounds like the same Drake from what I heard nah. from three songs. This sounds like the same Drake that you've been getting. Nah, bro. Like we didn't have none of those hard rap songs. Like we wanted a few of those. The shit with Cole, not a hard so rap song. Out of like he has like like twenty five songs in this album. It's cr like it's a really long album with very little rap on it. Mm. But I think he does this intentionally because he usually he'll come with honestly never mind and then he'll follow it up with some super hard shit right after. He did that with Twenty One though. The Twenty One album. But, was super but that's hard what I'm shit. saying. Yeah. So it's like now I bet you the next album is gonna be rap 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 rap. And then he pleases everybody. He pleases the people. When do you who come like back? He said he's taking a year off. Do you come back immediately? Mm, I, don't know. I wouldn't. If I was Drake, I'd go produce Sexy Red. Uh, I'll go executive produce a sexy red project yeah. right yeah. now. What do you say? I don't think he could um, do it though. I feel like he likes to stay relevant. Do what? Like take a hiatus. I I don't know, man. But I, the, the criticism seems like it's bothering him though. No, it doesn't. I, I've never seen him react this much to album criticism. I'm glad you brought that up, Alex. I don't think it's bothering him at all. I think I, it's marketing. I, it's all the fuck it is. Oh, you think yeah. so? And he's been around for 13 years. Yeah. He, maybe he just feels like, man, fuck y'all. Y'all been shooting at me all these years. Why can't I say something back? That's the thing I hate about people, right? We as people, y'all talk shit. And then that person responds, you go, oh, you sensitive. You sensitive. So what are you? So, so, you sensitive. So what are you talking we, about exactly? me? <laughs> what, are, what are we? Con what are we if we're constantly talking about him and critiquing him? Are I mean, we not sensitive? Nah, but if he puts you out heard art. you don't like his album, that's sensitive. And by the way, Drake been doing this. Drake started, he started it with Elliot Wilson. He was actually doing it a little bit before. Oh, yeah, yeah. He, he, got, <laughs> he got at Elliot. He got at me. He got it, you know, he, that's what he do, he's doing. It. Like, it's, it's, yeah. it's he, I have no problem Good with him shooting back at the people who have something to say about him. There's more clicks and views and talk about the album when he responds to somebody on yes. on, uh, on social media than there are when an article is written by Pitchfork or something like that. He hasn't like, put out a fucking video. That's it. Like yeah. with that one 8 a.m. in Charlotte video. He hasn't put out a video for the project, no nothing. Mm -hmm. I ain't see, you ain't seen no posters, no nothing. No, You ain't even seen a digital thing that says mm -hmm. in stores, October, wherever it came out. Yeah. It was all just chatter. And, and if you're tapping into the young crowd, you go do what the young motherfuckers do. Yeah. Young motherfuckers is always clapping back. Mm -hmm. Young motherfuckers always got something to say to somebody. Young people are always in the comments trolling, talking shit. He's playing the game, okay? That's what I assume. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, my OVO check clear. <laughs> <laughs> How much did they pay? It's good. <laughs> <laughs> what? My booty hole brown. My booty hole brown. Your underwear's not brown. Your underwear probably brown after that shit. <laughs> oh, everything's. You know, I never got paid by OVO. I don't want that to be out there. But you should believe me when I'm lying. I, I, I do believe you. But not. I just don't know what's wrong with me, Schultz. <laughs> I just hope a girl said that I pounded her once in my life. Oh, my God. I hope that a girl described it like that. I think about stuff like that. What do you mean? I do. I think about stuff. He like pounded that. it out. Now you you hope that when oh people, my god he pounded it. You hope that when somebody's like you know watching you on TV or hearing you you know like uh, oh. like watching you on stage you hope somebody be like, yo. One time he got some good dick. He yo, pounded me. Yeah, out. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Like he, I don't know he, one says pounded me out. You just said it. I just said, said when it. I got pounded, not pounded me out. <laughs> Two different things. That's even crazier, yo. So when you tell I your girls you got pounded. You tell your girl that you got pounded. It's crazy. I feel like I just said pound. If I'm talking to my girls, I don't say that. In but you era, never had a guy pounded from the bottom, though? Because that I do feel like I've done that. Yeah. Pounded from the bottom, now you quit. 
Yeah, no, 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 no. A straight pounding from the bottom. I think you could straight pound from the bottom. You just lay on your back? Get, yeah. That's, why? that's my best that's dick. That's so lazy. Because I got a perfect angle. You're my dick is Scorpio. perfect. You're Scorpio. Usually y'all like know what the fuck y'all do. Lay on my back. I grab by the thighs right here. Let's go. Rock them. Let's go. Rock them. Let's go. Rock them. Time out. Rock them. Real question. Hop off. I heard that. my stomach. Your dad is listening to this, Taylor. Rock them. Hop off. Nut on my stomach. Taylor. I heard that that doesn't do anything for you. never had a God, do that? Wait, tell me. I heard that doesn't do anything. Lift for you. you off, bust on the belly. What doesn't do anything for you? <laughs> you never. What are you talking you about? Never, what doesn't do anything for you? When you're just rocking. What you talking mean? to the microphone, Taylor? When you're just rocking on the dick. Yes, when you rock on the dick, that's when you, you guys come. Rocking on the dick. Rocking on the dick. Hey, rocking on the dick. Rocking on the dick. Hey, rocking on the dick. Rocking on the dick. Hey, rocking on the dick. Rocking on the dick. Hey, pound me. Wow. That sounds like a drink song. So, so, that, that's what y'all yeah. wanted for Drake. So that's what y'all wanted. That's, that's, what, they the, wanted. that's what y'all that's wanted. What they wanted. That's the growth. <laughs> that's that's what the growth that y'all needed. How many? And y'all, hey, stop lying about growth. Y'all don't like bro. growth. Bro. If y'all want, if y'all want mature hip hop, why y'all, why, why y'all ain't fucking with Michael Killer Mike album the way y'all should? Oh, you know what I'm saying? Why y'all ain't fucking with Kendrick, Mr. Morale, and the Big Steppers the way y'all should? They did. Mm. Huh? No, they I didn't. Yes, they. The, I know the people you're hanging around. You like, ain't got pounded once to the album. How you know? <laughs> what kind of trauma are you going through? You got pounded to Mr. Morales yeah, and Big Steps. No, we're having deep conversation, and then you know. There is one song you probably get. You can get it off too. The What's Silent Hill joint with the Kodak. Girl with the girl. Which one with the girl? No. I don't think about the one with Kodak. The one with Kodak. Silent Hill. Um, it's got a cool, smooth little beat. No, but you can't pound to that. You got to do a Metallica or something. Who wants like, to some pound? Pound, Darkness pound. is turning in me. <laughs> you guys are good. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are good. It's crickets. Uh. <laughs> so, I don't know the Metallica, bro. You got to listen to some Metallica. I do listen to Metallica, man. No, you don't, bro. I do, bro. Metallica's like white bone thugs. I listen to Metallica. I fuck with Metallica. I fuck with Nirvana. I fuck with Def Leppard. Na name a... De wait, what? <laughs> name a Metallica song. For what? When you know I'm lying. <laughs> Why would you ask me to do that when you know I'm goddamn lying? <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Why couldn't you just let me tell the lie? Then Metallica's Yo, little meme bad, page, bad, Metallica's bad, Instagram page takes the clip. So, yeah. oh, Charlamagne fucks the Metallica. Yo, that's and then all the Metallica fans say he's I a fucking liar. I Ask him to up. name one song. I fucked it up. That's my that's my bad, yo. That is my bad. You do know Nirvana, though. I do know Nirvana. And you know Guns N' Roses? I do know Guns N' Roses. I fuck with Axel and Axel and Slash. Hell yeah. Yeah, I'd fuck with them. It's another group I like too. Fucking um. Don't even try it. You're so <laughs> bad. I know. I know. Come on. It's so bad. It's, 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 it's unbelievable how bad he is. It's, it's unbelievable how bad he is, dude. You are really a grandfather, dude. You are in full dad mode. That is unbelievable. You might as well do this shit. You might as well. Oh, hey, hey, there you go. Look, my tongue fell off. Hey, I I got my thumb. That one slaps. <laughs> Two year old love that one. <laughs> the thumb, the thumb, the hiding the thumb. Yep. Slaps. Oh, let's pay some bills, Taylor. Got your nose. You gotta do got your nose. You ever do that? Yeah. My nose so big I could see it like that, so I, nobody could ever take it. They be trying to take my nose as a kid, and I just be like, Nah, that's just still there. That's, I see it. I see it, pops. He was lying. He didn't take shit. <laughs> Taylor don't want us to pay no bills, but Taylor, I'm gonna be honest with you. There's nothing in that meme shit this week that's interesting me. Really? You don't think the Steve Harvey memes were funny? I mean, they're hilarious, but they're just AI memes. Yeah, just, I don't know if it's t we could talk about they're it. They're just funny. Shout out to the goat, Steve Harvey. And by the way, it's all fun and games until you see that picture. You see, oh, go back to that one picture. You see that? Not, not, not the wiggle though. That one. Go back. Go back. Go back. Not the monsters. Go back. The one. Where he, go back. The one he's like drinking the drink. Now, look at that picture on the right mm -hmm. where it's the bottle of Hennessy on the ground. Mm -hmm. Look at the position he's in. He's like in a plank position. Hey, yo. His head is up. Hey, yo. His mouth is open. Whoa. He's screaming. It's hey, all funny games until they AI somebody back there pounding them. It's all funny games until someone's putting that British currency in you. That's what I'm telling you, man. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> what is British currency? The pound. Uh, <laughs> I ain't gonna explain them all. Yo. I ain't gonna explain them all, yo. 
Okay. <laughs> yeah, I ain't okay. gonna explain them all. Yeah, this, this yeah, this AI is too much, man. Why do people have this kind of time on their hands, yo? <laughs> and what kind of weed are y'all smoking that y'all sit around and say, hey, I'm gonna put Steve Harvey running from monsters? <laughs> like, I'm gonna spend my Friday night making Steve Harvey run. And by the way, I can tell once you make one, you probably laughing so hard that you keep it going. Yeah, once Because I'm not gonna lie, viral. I thought this shit was real. <laughs> I'm going to tell you why I thought it was real, because Halloween is coming. So I thought he was doing yeah. some type of Halloween promotion. It's oh, like some... you thought he actually was part of it? Yeah, the I thought it was like some yeah. family feud uh, Halloween uh, promo. Oh, uh, that's funny. I really thought it was like some family feud Halloween promo where they might do some shit where they have like the werewolf family. I mean, this is hilarious. That is fucking funny as this hell. This is hilarious. <laughs> I mean, Steve, Steve got to go as this for Halloween. Man, this shit is going to be scary in the future, though, because people are going to see these shit and really think these shit are real, yo. Yes. Hmm. <laughs> like we just did. <laughs> Yeah, Seriously. Maybe in the future, right now. In and the now. future, we're gonna be like, we're gonna be gone, and this shit is gonna be left. Yeah. And motherfuckers are really gonna think this shit, yo. God How's damn. lean? Has anybody here tried lean before? Mm. Nobody? Mm. Uh-uh. Let's pay some bills. <laughs> pay- Wait, why, why, why are we getting all quiet? Because you hit me with a lean one earlier. I don't know if this. No, 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 no. <laughs> I, I don't know. He was drinking lean in the, in the AI pictures. Yeah, I saw that. So, and and I've heard of lean, and everybody nah, seems to tell me it's really good, but I've never. You from Philly, and you never had lean, Taylor? Excuse me, no. Philly, really? don't act like Philly wasn't big on lean, pancakes and syrup. I only heard about that because of Lil Wayne. I don't know Shit. nobody that had it. Fucking uh, what was it? Beanie Siegel had a song? What was Beanie Siegel song called? Purple Rain? What was it called? Siegel had a whole song about What's it. What's lean mixed with? Well, I mean, Sprite, codeine, and promethazine, and liquidine. It's just like it's like his brain doesn't understand it. It's his it's his brain. Can, I gotta set him up with a few yeah. at the beginning of the pot so he can take it and then. And he gets a smirk too. Like oh, Yo, I'm, I'm gonna get him this time. He's so excited. He's so excited. I've never seen anybody more excited when he thinks he's got it and he's yet to get it. We really need to help him. Oh my god. No, we really need to help Bills, him. man. Yeah. <sighs> policy genius. Mm-hmm. Salute the policy genius. If you've got loved ones who depend on you, why leave anything up to chance in a worst case scenario, okay? Life insurance gives your family a safety net that can cover expenses so they won't have to worry about money while getting back on their feet. Let me tell you something about life insurance, man. It is a, it is a necessity, it is a must. I would be telling y'all this if Policy Genius wasn't a sponsor of the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. We thank them for sponsoring because I appreciate when we can have sponsors of things that I absolutely believe in and life insurance is one of them. Policy Genius makes finding the right policy simple and their team of licensed experts are on hand to help talk you through it, okay? Uh, you know, I, you, you don't want to be morbid about these things, but you just never freaking know. And we see so many stories of people who pass away and they can't even take care of their own funerals, you know, their families don't get left with anything. Life insurance makes sure that, you know, those things get taken care of. So even if you already have a life insurance, insurance policy through work, it may not offer enough protection for your family's needs and it may not follow you if you leave your job. But with Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just $292 per year for a million dollars in coverage. That's right, some options offer same day approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius knows how valuable your time is. Their technology makes it easy to compare life insurance quotes from America's top insurers in just a few clicks to find your lowest price. Policy Genius has licensed, award-winning agents who can help you find the best fit for your needs. They work for you, not the insurance companies. That means they don't have an incentive to recommend uh, one insurer over another so you can trust their guidance. Policy Genius is for parents, caregivers, and anyone else who has people who depend on them. They simplify the process of getting life insurance so you can protect the people you love. No wonder they have thousands of five-star reviews on Google and Trustpilot. Your loved ones deserve a financial safety net. You deserve a smarter way to find and buy it. Head to policygenius.com or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you could save. That's policygenius.com. So, do you want to do Talkspace? Of course. This episode is also brought to you by Talkspace. Do you think seeing a therapist or psychiatrist would be helpful? Of course you do. Maybe you don't. Maybe you're nervous. Maybe you don't have the time to actually go there and do it. Well, you know what? Talkspace has solved all that. By doing everything online, Talkspace has made getting the help that you want 
easy and accessible and affordable. With Talkspace, you can sign up online and get a personalized match with a provider that's right for you, typically within 48 hours. It's incredibly convenient to have virtual sessions with your licensed therapist from the comfort of your home. There's no need to commute to appointments, miss time at work, or line up childcare in order to attend sessions. It's mental health care made easy. Talkspace lets you send messages to your therapist so you don't have to wait for your next session. Okay, guys, therapy can help you shift your perspective, find tools to cope with difficult times, and be a guiding light. And as a listener of this podcast, you're going to get $80 off your first month with Talkspace when you go to Talkspace.com slash idiots, okay? To match with a licensed therapist today, go to Talkspace.com slash idiots to get $80 off your first month and show your support for this show. That's Talkspace.com slash idiots. Now let's get back to the show. Church announcement show, see? Yo, um, United States of America, the Life Tour is coming back home, okay? Ooh. That's right. We just put shows up for pre-sale right now in Chicago, Boston, and Washington, D.C. What you doing? What kind of build, venues? We're doing uh, Chicago Theater. We're doing the MGM uh, at Fenway in Boston, which is like this new crazy venue that's part of Fenway, the baseball mm -hmm. park. So it's fucking crazy. And then we're doing a Dar Constitutional Hall in Washington, D.C. Okay. So it's fucking sick. I'm, I'm excited. Uh, those are up right now. Pre-sale code is Andrew. Not sure which day this episode is coming out, but go immediately uh, as soon as you see this and go get those tickets if you're in those cities. Uh, very excited to get back to America and, and you know, share Europe is sold out, right? Yeah, Europe has been incredible, man. Yeah, we added some shows even in Europe. So we're going there. We'll probably be there by the time this episode comes out to Dublin, our first show. And then uh, we added another show in Manchester and uh, Amsterdam sold out, London sold out, Abu Dhabi sold out, man. So thank you guys so much. And then Australia after that, and then we coming home. So go to theandrewshows.com. Uh, the pre-sale code is Andrew. Get those tickets before they're gone. Cuppy, I told you Cuppy wants to go. She's she's Cuppy. in. Cuppy, you're in. Holler Cuppy at me. me. We'll make it happen. She said one of her friends is one of your biggest fans. She has to meet Andrew Schultz. Uh, respect her. She has great taste. <laughs> Phenomenal taste. Um, I just want to tell everybody our Thriller Possibility Summit is coming. The second annual Thriller Possibility Summit. That's where the Black Effect, iHeartRadio, we fly 50 HBC, HBCU students to Nashville, Tennessee, and we have, you know, a weekend of panels and mixers for them. And, you know, the people on the panel, the people who went to HBCUs who have gone on in the world to achieve great things. What did you say, Taylor? Mentorship. Yeah, and mentorship. So it's really just bringing HBCU students together and, you know, creating like a, a networking pool for them so they can find yes. mentors and other people to network with from other HBCUs. We did it last year in Nashville, doing it again this year in Nashville. Uh, that's in November. So salute to everybody who's registered. We can only pick 50 students, you know what I mean? Because it's not cheap to fly 50 people out and put them in hotel rooms and stuff like that. So 50 is what we can do. So we'll be doing that 50. Um, and we'll see you soon. And I want to tell everybody, uh, download or go listen. I'm sorry. Go listen to Alicia Renee's Unleash for Love, which is available on Audible right now. It's the latest project from uh, myself and Kevin Hart's company, SBH Productions. It stars Alicia Renee and Pretty V and Logan Browning. It's a romantic scripted comedy. Just Hilarious is on it. Uh, Kadeem Hardison and Jasmine Guy play Alicia's uh, parents. So make sure you check that out and leave a rating and a review. Thank you to everybody who's been doing that. And go pre-order my guy's book, Doug Melville, uh, Invisible Generals. That's the next release on my book imprint, Black Privilege Publishing through Simon & Schuster, which is coming out November 7th, Veterans Day. Um, yeah, go get that. It tells the story of um, uh, 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 two, a, a World War general and his son who were like the first, first members of the Tuskegee Airmen, if I'm remembering that correctly. Oh, far. Yeah, so make sure you go check that out. It's in stores November 7th, but you can pre-order that now. Now let's get back to the show. Um... Man, school me on this, man. Talk to me. What is going on in Israel? Because I see everybody trying to politicize this, and I see people taking sides. All I see is people getting killed. I see children getting killed. I see bodies, you know, being carried to the street. What is there to do but offer prayers? Here's the thing. You, My we need, God. We need somebody way smarter than than me, way smarter than anybody in this room to explain this entire situation. Damn, Chris. Chris is sitting there. Sorry, man. Chris is really smart. Maybe he knows everything that's going on. Maybe he doesn't. I don't know. Do you feel confident to talk about it? 
Talk to us, Chris. You're a brave man, my boy. Well, Chris is also Jewish. Yeah. <laughs> what does that mean? He knows what's going on. <laughs> um, I actually, Chris is the first person I hit. I, I say, hit, I hit, sent Chris the article, and I'm like, what are the, the global ramifications of this? Well, the global ramifications are different. I think that you hit it on the head right here. Is There's a weird thing that's happening right now and is very confusing where there, there seems to be a, a celebration of people that have been massacred, murdered, children that have been murdered, women Why? that have been murdered. In, it, I mean, like, innocent Individuals. Whenever innocent people are killed, this is nothing to celebrate, nothing to be happy about. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's incredibly tragic and sad. Whether that's on the Israeli side or the Palestinian side, exactly. and the Lord knows it has happened on um, both sides, and it's disgusting in both ways. But I don't understand what's going on where people feel like this is something that they should celebrate. This is something we should be disgusted by as human beings. You never want to see innocent life taken, especially children. And then there's this weird justification that's being used, which is the occupation in uh, of, of, of Palestine, obviously, which is a horrendous, horrible thing. But killing a seven-year-old, like a seven-year-old has nothing to do with that occupation. A seven-year-old doesn't sure. even know what the fuck occupation is. You have people's lives who are being taken from them that have no fucking clue what this occupation is. So you cannot celebrate that and you cannot put that responsibility on them. It's like the seven-year-old is the casualty of a war that's been going on way yeah, and longer And there's gonna be more casualties alive. on the other side, way more on the other side, which is fucking tragic and disgusting and horrible. And anytime these innocent people on both sides are killed, it is disgusting. So there's there's this weird like celebration around this that is incredibly uncomfortable for me. I think that we should all be saddened by this. When a fucking Ukrainian, an innocent Ukrainian dies, we should be sad. When an innocent Russian dies, we should be sad. When an innocent Iraqi dies because we went in there for fucking weapons of mass destruction, we should be embarrassed, we should be sad, we should be heartbroken. Right. There are innocent children here being killed and you see it every single day. You go on social media and Isn't for some reason there's people could you explain it to those, it and being yeah just, could, could you explain it to those people basically like would you, you did, would you celebrate if, if if other people in another country were celebrating 911 exactly if you was just watching the news yeah. and you saw these planes running to the towers and you yeah. saw all of these p innocent people running and you know trying to you know go for cover and I you think, saw people jumping yeah. out of buildings dying how do you not have no empathy for that? And then I can imagine what Jewish people are going through right now where they're just like, we're sitting there like, why are people happy that this happens? I don't get it. Now, I also, I understand what's going on on the Palestinian side where they're, they're like, oh, now you talk about it. You know, when our kids have been killed, when our kids have died and are innocent, nobody talks about it. Now you're talking about it. So I, I understand their frustration with that. I understand their frustration for the occupation. I understand their frustration for the situation that is Gaza and the West Bank right now. It's fucking heartbreaking. Now, I thought they was at war for 75 years. I thought they'd been at war. Yes, yes, 100%. So, 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 so Chris, this is what I need you to explain to me. Oh, what? but just, just real quick, okay. just real quick. So I also think that there is this, this side. There's also... Okay, while, there's, while there are people that are celebrating what just happened, right, on one side, there are also people that are completely ignoring the circumstances that have led to something like this, right? It doesn't justify it at all. There's no justification for killing innocents. There's no justification for murdering children. Never, never, none. Case closed. I agree none, with you. Okay? That being said, to ignore the situations that cause these types of things to pop up is also willfully ignorant. So you mean they ignore the last 75 years? No, nobody's ignoring it, but they're oh. pretending like this is an isolated incident. Like, how the hell could this happen? And it's like, it should never happen. There's no justification, right? Ever, there's none for what happened. But to ignore the course of events that led to this is also unfair. So I'm like so confused by the reaction to this, but I imagine there's just so much anger and vitriol on both sides because of what they've both experienced, the me members of their family that they both lost. It's fucking painful and heartbreaking. But you would hope that you could go on fucking Instagram and not see celebrations of kids that have been, of situations that have murdered kids from both sides. I don't want to see either side celebrating. That's I think that's so bare minimum as humans. We could just not do that today. That's what's confusing to me because if this has been going on for 75 years and then this happens and then I saw Israel declare war, I'm like, well, I thought they was already at war. Yeah, but I guess maybe, I don't know. Now, you want to wanna fill us in? Well, I mean, I, I would start by saying that I agree with Andrew with what you just said. I mean, I think one of the most kind of dangerous things about this moment is 
I'm seeing a lot of people basically saying, you have to pick a side. Why? But there is no middle. And I'm here to tell you, I'm in the middle, right? Like, it's, yeah. it's very dangerous to say that, like, you're either on this side of it or that side of it. Well, well, well but middle is weird, right? It's well, like, okay, maybe middle's the wrong word. Yeah, because I think middle is is where you, it seems like you're okay what Hamas just did. No, of course not. I mean, I... What I, Hamas just did is horrendous crime against humanity, cannot do it. It's right? all, all I know you, is I'm you, watching the TV you, you, on mute, yeah. and all I see is bloodshed and murder. I don't know who's who. Never right. justified. I'm just, and I'm looking at it, I'm like, oh, I'm like, this is fucked up. Never justified. And then somebody says, this is happening in Israel. That's fucked up. This is happening in Palestine. That's it's, fucked it's up. It's all fucked up. And the, I think the danger is this brings out the most tribal instincts in people. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm guilty of that. Look, I've, you know, I've always considered what's happening to the Palestinian people to be a form of occupation or even apartheid in the most it extreme. Is. It's yeah. not even a form. Right? Like, it is. Yeah, right. Yeah. Like, I... I've always felt that way. And even when... Which is tragic. Which is tragic. And it makes me very uncomfortable to be associated with that as Jew. I mean, one of the reasons I've never gone to Israel is I feel uncomfortable about the situation. And to keep in mind, it yeah. is, there are a lot of Jews that share your sentiments about sure. this. In Israel, there sure. are Jews that do not... Oh, live. Israel <laughs> was a fractured society up until this weekend. I think, you, And I think that's why, what... Why? Because basically, I mean, not to get too into the specifics, but the current current government, Netanyahu's government, is very right-wing and has really doubled down on the far right, what I'll call extremists in the Israeli population. And the left, there's a fight over the judiciary, but it's really more like the struggle of the left versus the right. And the, there's... And uh, there's... Jews I mean, are like, we don't want that. We, we don't, don't want, want that. I mean, you know... War. We don't want this. I mean, we were talking about it within the context of Drake earlier, but like, I feel that contrarian impulse as an American Jew, because I feel that if every Jew in America just kind of says we support Israel a thousand percent, that's dangerous because the people running Israel are humans and they make mistakes and they institute bad policies. And there has to be a voice within the Jewish community yeah. that's pushing back at times against that. And I think that's healthy for Jews. I don't think that's a self-hating Jew or anti-Semitic. I think that's part of a natural balance of things. No, I think that you can be critical of your governments. People are not their right. governments. I'm critical of so much sure. shit that the American government is doing right now. That's the beauty of America. Exactly. And but, it had been the beauty of Israel. So, okay. so I think the tricky thing, obviously, when you're talking about Israel specifically, is they're like, do you support Israel? The knee-jerk reaction, obviously, for Jewish people right. is, do I support a Jewish homeland? They go, well, yes. But do you support Israel can also come with every foreign policy that's sure. attached to it. Do I support America? Do you know someone who loves America more than me? Yeah, no. but, but you may not agree with America's current right. administration. I, you might not agree I, with America's current policies or legislation. By supporting America, yeah. I'm holding it accountable. You don't Absolutely. support America if you're not holding it accountable. No. If America is falling or That's failing right. the values that it's supposed to uphold, then you're not supporting America. You're supporting this bastardized version of itself. Right. I don't support that. I support the dope shit about America. And American democracy. Absolutely. They gave us a constitution that said, this is what it is. And it better work for everybody. That's right. And if it doesn't, I'm vexed. That's right. So I, I can see that there is somebody that believes that there is a Jewish homeland, believes in the state, but is also critical of what is going on right now in Gaza, what has been going on in the West Bank. Sure. And all of my friends that are Jewish or Israeli have that sentiment. What happens is once war, once there's a bomb drop, it once changes. there's family members that are murdered, it's it's like, it's it's tribal, like you said. It's the I second we're attacked, we, like let's say me and Alex are on the street, second somebody punches one of them, it's not like, well, what led to this? It's, but no, right. it's go time. But that's like, right though. I think human nature, if that's, that's, your, that's your natural human reaction, yes. that's right. Yes. Who wouldn't be like that? I mean, I, look, I can walk you through my reaction on Saturday. Talk to right? me. I woke up. Uh, unprecedented, uh, you know, missile strikes from Gaza. In my mind, I'm like, yeah, well, this is what is going to happen when you have people locked into a situation like this. This is inevitable. And that's my knee-jerk reaction, right? Then I start seeing the footage, the images of the AK-47s in the mouths of someone who looks like my grandmother. The kids, you know, my, my cousin's in Israel with his family, right? The, the family slaughter that look exactly like my cousins. You, you can go on and on. I, I, saw, to I, saw, I saw them parading this woman's body. Uh, but, like, you know, know young was girls alive, that look I like my dead. nieces and nephews, you know, clearly being abused. And, you know, I'm ready to join the fucking IDF yeah, at exactly. that moment. Like, I'm like, let's go. And it's a very dangerous moment because of that. Because even 
someone like myself, who who's always been, you know, way to the far of one extreme on that, now feels like I got to I got to defend. I got to fight. And you don't. Because it's life or death. And in life or death, you can't be rational. You have to do what you have to do to survive. So you, there's no It don't no matter time. who's right or who's wrong when you're trying to survive. It's life or death. Straight up. It don't matter, who, you know, who started what, how it started. No. When you're trying to survive in that moment, let's go. Exactly. But, survive. But then the rational part of me has to step back and say, this is a life or death moment. How did we get to this life or but death that's, moment? But that's a privilege of being in New York. Sure. Yeah. But like, that's also a choice. It's not just a privilege. Sure, it's sure, a choice. Sure. I, I, guess, I, I wanted guess, yeah. to go live on a kibbutz in Israel after I graduated college, and I yeah. decided not to because of this reason. Yep. I was like, I don't want to get caught up in this shit. And maybe that's a privilege to the, live and, in America and, you know. And to what you were saying also about, like, the emotion that, that, that goes through in these moments where you're not able to add context to the situation, it just further drives the rift, right? Right. So it's like... Now there can't even be a situation where people are coming to the table and there's this negotiation, there's this conversation. I mean, to be fair, there's no negotiating with Hamas. Hamas has one clear goal. They're like, no, no more juice. No. Get the, so it's like... You, the, I feel bad for the people because, because they are being... Because they're held hostage under Hamas as well. They are being manipulated by forces. The far right in Israel manipulates the Israeli people. Hamas, which I guess you could call far right, in uh, Palestine and Gaza and what have you, like... I, you know, I can't speak and it's, for... And it's easy for Hamas to manipulate the people within Gaza because of the dire circumstances sure. that they're living in. I, the more the more difficult your circumstances, the easier it is to motivate you for something better, yeah. right? I mean, like... Like, I don't see how, as a human being, you can't put yourself in those shoes and be like, that's fucked up. Yeah, man, this is just so tragic. I, it's I just think, so tragic. I think the moral of the story... Well, I don't know if there's a moral to the story, but from an American perspective... Just from a people's perspective, I'm really talking about social media right now. You don't have to have an opinion on this. You don't have to I can't watch plant a flag. No, no, no. You got to take that down. No. It's okay just to say it's tragic and or or you or, or you feel can, conflicted and feel sad. I mean, that's I think that I think any normal person has multiple opinions about it. Sure, I think a normal person would be like, listen, it's horrendous what the Palestinians have gone through and have to go through. Right, right? that's horrendous, and then. It is downright disgusting and awful oh to murder God. innocent fucking children on both sides, no matter what. That fucking headline Taylor just put up. I'm like, they, they, they're showing that shit? Yeah. That this, shit said this, Hamas threatens to kill. For every bomb that's dropped. This, yeah, kill somebody for every bomb that's dropping. The, gir they can't, the girl's screaming. Oh, my fucking God. Th this this is what has so me you really. So you can this feel is, upset. This, the, is, the, this yeah. is the most concerning part. Um, Israel in particular doesn't play when it comes to hostages or, you know, they'll go to the mat even to get the bodies of a soldier who, who's gotten killed. The idea that there are 150 Israeli citizens in Gaza right now and that, you know, my concern is not only what happens to these people, but is it broadcast essentially because they've taped a lot of this stuff. Well, it already is, right? Those they, those they images, outside of the human cost, those, those images, it's... It's going to do a lot of damage to a very delicate situation. And that's when I start worrying on a global scale. Like, what what could this turn into? You think people will start doing stuff in America? I'm concerned about that. You think Palestinians yeah. here will start trying to do stuff to Jewish people? Jewish people here start stuff I'm concerned about that. I'm I mean, definitely they've already concerned. been fighting, man. Like, you've seen it. I think it was Toronto. You saw it Toronto, in Times Square. I mean, like it, it, Israeli... Uh, Tourists were killed in Egypt. Nobody covered it because it's right. lost in this. But an uh, Egyptian Dude, police officer shot up a bus of Israeli tourists the other day. What? Yeah. No, I don't need, Was it a bus or they were on a private tour guide and they shot the tour guide and both of the tourists? I thought they were in the bus, but the pictures made it. I don't know. But suffice to say, they killed a bunch of Israeli tourists. This has the potential to go to a lot of really dangerous and places. And once it starts happening in those other places, man. It's very complicated. You never know where the truth is. You're kind of always tragic. in the dark on this. And you're not going to find the truth through war. No. You missed the war. Oh, no. Because right, right now it's just all about survival. Oh, no. You know what I mean? All right, man, let's pay some bills, Taylor. Let's pay some bills and reset. Peace to everybody, man. Lord have mercy. Uh, Yeah, let's take a break, man. Um, Squarespace. 
Today's episode is definitely brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is the all-in-one platform for building your brand and growing your business online. Stand out with a beautiful website, engage with your audience, and sell anything. Your products, content you create, and even your time, okay? Squarespace makes it easy for creators to monetize their content, content and expertise in a way that fits their brand. With member areas, you can unlock a new revenue stream for your business and free up time in your schedule by selling access to gated content, like videos, online courses, or newsletters, okay? Create pro-level videos effortlessly. The Squarespace Video Studio app helps you make and share engaging videos to tell you, to tell your story, grow your audience, and drive sales. Stand out in any inbox with Squarespace email campaigns. Collect email subscribers and convert them into loyal customers. Start with an email template and customize it by applying your brand ingredients like site colors and logo. Built-in analytics measure the impact of every sin. Use those analytics and insights to grow your business. Learn where your site visits and sales are coming from and analyze which channels are most effective. Improve your website and build a marketing strategy based on your top keywords and most popular products and content. Head to squarespace.com slash idiot for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use offer code idiot to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain that's squarespace.com slash idiot with offer code idiot for 10% off your first purchase this episode has also been brought to you by blue chew okay if you want to get to pounding you know what i mean if you really want to hear them is that what taylor said it sounds like i wouldn't know but if you want to hear it you got to chew it up you chew it up, chew it out. Blue Chew, same active ingredients that's inside Viagra, Cialis, but this is the chew, this one that we rock with, okay? You're going to get your first month free. All you got to do is pay $5 shipping. Think about that. The best dick you ever given in your life for free, you just go to bluechew.com and use the promo code IDIOTS, okay? You get your first month free, just pay $5 shipping. Now let's get back to the show. I saw somebody do a Blue Chew challenge. I don't know what podcast Ain't it no was. Way. I promise you. Somebody popped it. And I, I, it was only a, a clip I saw, but somebody popped it. And then I guess they flashed it later in the podcast. And he was just talking and he was like, yo, <laughs> yo, yo, this shit works. <laughs> I forgot what pod it was. That shit was funny as fuck. Um, Chris Rock yeah. to direct Martin Luther King biopic, Steven Spielberg to produce. Hmm. Now. Universal Pictures is gearing up to tell a definitive cinematic biopic about the life of Martin Luther King Jr. The studio has optioned the rights to adapt Jonathan Eag's critically acclaimed biography, King, A Life. Chris Rock is in final talks to direct and produce, and Steven Spielberg will be executive producer. The film will be produced by Amblin Partners uh, with Christy Mask. Mas Makaso Krieger serving as producer along with Chris Rock. King of Life has been a big bestseller and has been nominated for the National Book Award. It had been hailed as a definitive biography of the civil rights icon Dr. King for its use of previously untapped sources that include newly declassified FBI information. Let me go on record as saying this is going to be the best Martin Luther King Jr. biopic of all time. Wow. The reason I think it's going to be the best Martin Luther King biopic of all time is because um, Steven Spielberg does Amazing work. We know this. Chris Rock. I know y'all look at Chris Rock as a comedian. Chris Rock is one of the smartest people you ever want to meet in your life. And Chris Rock, I believe, is going to tell the story of Martin Luther King Jr. after the I Have a Dream speech. Mm. The more radical version of Martin Luther King Jr. You know what I'm talking about, right, Chris? Right. The more... Just Chris Morrow talking, not Chris Rock. But mm -hmm. the more radical version of Martin Luther King Jr. The anti-Vietnam War, the unite yeah. the people together. Mm -hmm. The one who people, the one who America didn't like. You know, now I mean they they never really liked him, but the one America, the one that was so polarizing. Yeah. America didn't like him because they thought he was, you know, uh, you know, what was it, Chris? Uh, I feel like I have uh, um, integrated my people into a burning house. That part too, but that uh, Martin Luther King. I mean, I think it became the they thought he was a communist. Yeah, the reason it became dangerous is because it didn't just become about racial rights. It became about the economy, the economy. and uniting uh, poor people across right. racial lines and, yes. and, and protesting the war in Vietnam. The real question is who will play Dr. King? It's and we, not Chris Rock. There's someone you know who has stated on record many, many times that his single most burning passion in life is to have this role. Who is it? Tyrese Gibson. He's advocated for playing this role. I can I can guarantee you <laughs> that Chris Rock nor Steven Spielberg are going to cast Tyrese Gibson to play Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. 
I just think Chris did that to bring back the humor because of what we just was talking about. And it no, was, I mean, I've had this discussion with him personally. It's not happening. All right. I have a dream. <laughs> no, you don't. No, you I don't. have a dream no, you today. Don't. No, you don't. No, you don't. The Tyrese. No, you don't. Of Fast and the Furious fame. No, you don't. And other movies will play the great Martin Luther King no, he Jr. Won't. One day. You, you tell me Baby Boy Chris, can't play Martin Luther King? I think King? Baby Boy could do it. No, he won't. I think huh? Baby could. No, I mean, Who, could. Who's going to do it? I don't know who's going to do it, but it won't be Chris Rock. I mean, uh, Tyrese Gibson. Channing Tatum. Shut up. <laughs> Let me ask you a question. Who would be the best Speaking white guy no to play Martin Luther King Jr.? Travis Kelsey. The Snow Yo. Crab King. The Snow <laughs> Crab Leg King, baby. All right. King Snow Crab Leg, Travis Kelsey. <laughs> Bro, they thought we called it out. No did y'all get, get message when he hurt his ankle? Yes. They I thought we called that. it out. We called it a concussion, though. Yeah, we called it. I thought we said concussion. We said get hurt. Yeah. Now, nah, fuck it. We yeah. said he was going to yeah. get hurt, yo. We called go. it. We called it. We Taylor called effect. it. Yo, did you hear the conspiracy about Taylor Swift? This is fire. What's the conspiracy? So Taylor Swift is an environmentalist. She really cares about the environment, and it's one of her causes. Mm -hmm. She also has a private jet that she flies around. Obviously, it's more convenient for somebody who's famous as her to fly yeah. private. She can't exactly just shut down an airport. Absolutely. Public. But she is into the environment while she pl uh, flies private in her private jet. And that is used as a criticism because private jets are going to pollute the environment way more than any straw or plastic does, right? So people are saying... Uh, that she went to this football game to distract people from her uh, private jet usage. Yeah, but she probably flew a private jet to get there. Wait for it. When you Google, two weeks ago, when you Googled Taylor Swift jet, what do you think came Hilarious. up? Hilarious. Now when you Google Taylor Swift jet, Hilarious. her at the New York Jets game is what comes up. Now, she can't just go to that game so because then people know what she's trying to do so that she goes to the game before and this game. Go. Taylor's so crazy. What she, what she, what she do? It shouldn't be private jet. She oh said my jet. God. So she's going to go to a 49ers game to disguise her mining interests next? <laughs> exactly. <Okay. laughs> Nobody's going to actually type private. No, it's just Taylor Swift jet. Exactly. Done. Wow. Done. Oh, Never no, no, no. The, the conspiracy theory is what come up. Oh, that's fire. We on it. Well, oh, see, another one, Taylor Swift conspiracy theory. Goes viral. Same thing. That's what I'm talking about. Did Taylor Swift, Vulture, did Taylor Swift attend the New York Jets game to detract from her private? See? That's that fire. shit don't work. We on that ass, Taylor. <laughs> you know we on I'm that saying? ass, Taylor. That yeah. shit don't work. Y'all supposed you see? to be Swifties, bro? <laughs> you I shouldn't have even said yeah, that shit. Fuck, You're right. God up. damn it. I, I don't understand why y'all mad at Taylor Swift riding a private jet, man. You want her to get where she's going swiftly, don't you? Hey. 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 Listen, um, Alex, did you see your girl did an uh, open letter to black women? Who? Who? My girl, Kayla. Oh, yeah. Kayla Nicole. Yeah, what she, she said? She did that at my studio. Get you know the it. fuck out of here. <laughs> that ass. Pull yeah. it up, man. Yeah. That was WTF, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was. She did an open letter to black women and said, can we hear it? Can we play oh, some we of this? we got to see this. Can we play some of this? She misses that white it's, chocolate. It's beautiful. She misses can that we play white some of this? chocolate. Yeah, I hate it. But what happened? You think he dickmatized her? Let's hear it. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you say it? Dickmatized? Hypnotized? Oh, dickmatized. Yeah, here. It's always been really important for me to use my platform not to create division, but to elevate and unite women, black women specifically. So I prepared a letter and would like to share it with you today. Dear black girl, they may call you a traitor for falling in love. You'll hope the ones closest will protect you, but you will quickly find out that people don't protect what they don't value. They'll say you're too much, too provocative, too boisterous, too outspoken, and in the same breath tell you that you're not enough, you're not successful enough, not wholesome enough, maybe not even intelligent enough. They'll say you deserve the backlash and embarrassment. Because of your blackness, you should have known better. They'll even try to tie your value to your net worth. But black girl, please remember your value lies elsewhere. Your value is deep within your heart, the way you love, the way you give. Your value is in your resilience your willingness to forgive. The way you protect what means most to you, even if it hurts you along the way. And the way you stand up for what means most to you, even though 
they may not ever do the same. Mm. But black girl, respectfully, let me stop you there because you don't have to participate in this tumultuous, often one-sided journey. Preserve your heart. Even when they try to quantify your character and test your boundaries, you do not have to engage. You do not have to respond because there is power in your silence. And you can use that same power to silence the noise and the self-doubt. Silence the voices within that want you to give in to this demoralizing and antiquated narrative. Tap into that power. Because I know, girl, the rage of the world is loud. But black girl, your God is louder and your tribe is stronger. Your blood runs deeper and is filled with strength. And when you finally find the strength to speak your truth, it is your voice that will help heal. Because black girl, let me tell you, you're not in this alone. And even though sometimes I too ask, why me? I'm, I'm reminded, reminded that, that this, that this, reminded that this, reminded that this. All of that for the King Snow Crab Lake? Imagine coming home from a game, you got three concussions, was, your knee hurts, beautiful. your ankle hurts. That was beautiful. It was beautiful. Mm -hmm. But just imagine that. It's all of that for Travis Kelsey? Yep. Because to me, that's not that's not something for all black women. Like, she's she should talk to, like, black women who are in interracial relationships. Hey, direct those questions to Taylor. <laughs> she yeah. started Speaking it off by saying that. She literally, she literally starts it off by saying all the criticism she received Travis, yo. Poor Travis. from being a black person. Poor Travis. We a don't black feel, woman who dated a white man. We don't feel bad for Travis? No. I don't, I, like, I don't understand how is, this a, how is this directed towards all black women. Can we just Taylor. talk about Travis for one minute? How is this directed towards all black women? I understand she started off like This is all about the King Snow Crab Lake. No. no. Yes, it is. You can relate to other stuff. It, sure you can, but this is because of the backlash she's receiving because she used to be Travis Kelsey's ex. I'm sorry. So, she, well, why, well, so, so, so she, what though? Sorry, well, because of the backlash. We so she can't you, respond? We got you, dogs. Over the King Snow Crab Lake? She was getting Don't make it all about black women. by your Swifties. Who? Yep. Kayla. Yep. She was the one that was talking shit first. Okay. How? Hey. She said, oh, he cheated on me, da, 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 da. He's okay. just trying to not when hear When did she ever speak out Listen, about him? She did. What she you talking about? When? She spoke out. absolutely did. He when? Cheats. I didn't she, see she, that. She, oh, she stop. absolutely did. I didn't. Positively. Oh, stop. She absolutely did. No, I didn't see that. I didn't see that. You're talking about another black girl he dated, not her. No, she didn't. Kayla Nicole. What are you talking about? No, she is beautiful. That's probably. Oh, oh, yeah. Kayla yeah. Nicole oh, said that Travis Kelsey is a cheater. No, she didn't. She did. Where did she say that? Google it. Now, I want to bet every bit of money in your pocket. Bet everything. Google Kayla Nicole speaks out against Travis Kelsey. Bet. Don't talk to us about Taylor Swift. Come on, yo. Yeah. <laughs> He's sweating <Swifties. laughs> over here. <laughs> gang, gang. It was probably <laughs> y'all friend that spoke out. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, chill out, chill out. Google, Google nah, Kayla Nicole. Black girl, she did. How many of these poems do you think Travis had to listen to, yo? Son, you are. Oh, it's ass. about. <laughs> what? What? Angle, pull it up on the screen so we can see it. It's about what she just did. We were just why. No, no, it did not. That's what? a lie. Yes. That's a lie. No, you looking up the new new. Google. <laughs> I did. Look up the old, no, old. Go, 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 no. See, Kayla Nicole says Travis Kelsey cheater. Pull that up. Oh my god. Kayla Nicole says Travis Kelsey is a cheater. You, hey, you're not even spelling right now. She even, we, we, me and Taylor talked about this. Lena <laughs> says Travis Kelsey is a cheater. Yes, and a narcissist. That too. That wasn't her. Yes, it was. Mm -hmm. go, go to the headlines. It was never cheating. It was cheap. Yes, Travis Kelsey accused for of, of cheating for a month. Oh wow! By ex, cl click on yeah, it. by ex who? Kay Nicole. No. Yup. Oh my no, God. it's not. Yup. No, it's not. Yup. What's going on? Why can I see this? These guys. Travis fo Kelsey accused focus of cheating for a month by ex girlfriend and dating show things, winner. Man. Yeah, dating show winner. Oh she's my not God. off. She's yep. not yep. on that. Yup. Kayla Nicole. His relationship with fashion influencer and journalist Kayla Nicole. But she wasn't on the show. Am I on drugs? Hold up, one second. Travis Stop. Kelsey was Stop. accused of cheating Stop. in 2017 by ex-girlfriend Maya Bam. Exactly. exactly. Like, what are you exactly. talking about? Exactly. Yo, y'all know the truth. What are you talking about? I've been trying to. Yo, hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't get mad. Y'all give him back that same energy. Give him back that same energy. Look how embarrassed he is right now. No, no, let me tell y'all something. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you something. No, 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 no
don't no, try to do this whole thing. Y'all gotta listen. Are you gonna listen? Are you gonna listen? Y'all gotta listen. Hold on. Are you gonna listen? No, no, no. I want an apology first. A white man is speaking. A white man is speaking. A white man is speaking. You know the problem? I need to be listened to. No, Charlamagne, do not do that. A white man is speaking. Do not do that. Don't try to turn it because you got caught lying. You know the problem with this? What? You know the problem with this? This is the problem. You know the problem? This is the problem. Y'all believe in me when I tell y'all that I be lying. You never believe y'all. Y'all believe. Y'all believe. Y'all believe. Y'all believe. Y'all believe. Every you. time. I knew it was a single time. What are you talking the whole about? The time. I knew it was a I wanted to make sure y'all knew what y'all, y'all were talking listeners, about. We knew excuse me, listeners, if y'all run it back, y'all can hear me and Alex both saying that. 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 Nah. Our listeners don't hear that. <laughs> our listeners definitely don't hear that. Our listeners have heard me Shelly, saying. where's our apology? Just apologize. Yeah. A never. black girl just spoke talking about how we get fucking unvalued <laughs> and everything I would else. I would and never, you just can't this apologize. Is, I would never apologize for something as trivial as this. We don't uplift black women anymore in this podcast. Right. That's it's crazy, crazy. yo. Yeah. Listen, That's I'm all crazy, about uplifting yo. black women. But That's crazy, Dr. Umar Charlotte. Johnson needed to proofread that fucking open letter. Okay? <laughs> all right? Dr. Umar Johnson needed to proofread that open letter and tell Kayla and Nicole, nah. don't make this about all black women. That was right, beautiful. though? This that is about beautiful. black women. This is for colored girls yep. who like to date white men. Yup. This, wow. this is a message yep. for them. Wow, no, that's it's crazy. Yup. It's the truth. It's the truth. I understand hey, it where it sparked from, but it at the same the time, that's why I said you can take that and that use so it. That's crazy. Bro. You wouldn't know. You never dated a white guy. This you never not dated about a white guy. This is not about By the way, black women, I want to say this to black women. You can be all that without dating the King Snow Crab Lake. All of that stuff Kayla and Nicole yes, are talking about, that is you. But you don't have to date a King Snow Crab Leg and get attacked by Swifties to realize that about yourself. I uh, wanna be don't do that. That's not what she realized about herself and everything. Whoa, so whoa, why whoa, she didn't even do an open letter like that before? She had... She didn't have to do open letter, but Dylan. Were you like about she, to say she has? No, I was gonna say that she has a spoke about her blackness, though. So I'm sure her. she has, and I salute Kayla Nicole been for with that. You a white guy. You don't know what we do. You gonna have to write poetry after this. You're so. That's annoying. the only way you can handle all the emotions. It. This is Zach. What y'all doing exactly what she's talking about? Yep. What do you Stop. mean exactly? I feel like y'all are gaslighting us. It's a shame. Bro. <laughs> y'all it's never shame. dated a white girl. I still think Kayla Nicole said that. She did. No, she did. Google it, didn't say it. Google it again. Yo, Google, it Google it again. Why Google, Google, it Google it one wrong. more time, yo. Google it one more time, yo. It was not her. Y'all, y'all need to Google it one more time. Oh just Google Kayla Nicole. Crazy. Son, Google Kayla Nicole. Did you just tell us? Did you just tell us? And this is your fault because y'all wanted to believe what, what why can't I was we do, saying. Why can't we dig a little why? more? No, so you can just point our fingers again and be like, see, stop listening to us. But y'all will be double right. Why can't we just dig a little more? You said even. No, first of all, first of all, you didn't even admit. You didn't even admit that you were wrong. Da, 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 da. Why do I That's have to admit that I was argument. wrong? I gotta start using that. Why argument. not? That's a fire argument. Why do I have to admit I was wrong? New shit. When the cameras are rolling, the microphones are on. Why do I gotta admit I'm wrong? The cameras are rolling, the microphones are on. I think you should apologize to a black woman in this room. You should have. Yeah. You should have yelling at me. You, you were yelling at me. You were yelling at me. I was yelling at you and Alex. Y'all need to apologize to black women. I apologize. You know what? For yelling at Taylor. <laughs> Yo, stop. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Alex, yeah. I want you. That's can you, can you accept my apology hater, for yo. yelling at Taylor? Thank you, Alex. There we go. That's a hater. Thank you, Alex. I'm about to replay this. I'm about to replay this. Can you play Kayla? No, for real. Google Kayla Nicole. Google, just Google no. it. Because she right. never fucking said it. She I just think Google she did. It. No, she didn't. Hey. One more time. Why do you not want to believe a black woman? <laughs> Yo, yeah. I'm not for this. What happened to believe black women? I'm not for this. I believe her. I believe every word she said. I believe she said it. But I'm not, I'm, I don't like that the root <laughs> yeah. of this is the King Snow Crab Lake. Me neither. This guy is crazy. Think about yo, it, yo. Ask an idiot. Think about this it, yo. Is crazy. I didn't know this was happening either. Kayla Nicole doesn't deserve hate, but I do vividly remember how she made shady comments towards Sierra and Russell Wilson. Ooh. Finn that marriage. Oh, wow. When? Married today. Oh, wow. Married. When? That's fake. I don't know. I'm just reading Twitter. That's fake. This yeah. is. This is That's crazy. Nice. Hold up one more. Yeah, no, but, we're yeah, done. Yeah, because Taylor thought she had a whole 100% majority. No, <laughs> she didn't know. This is Twitter, she though. She I'm just looking at her. civil war going on social media about this. I didn't either, by the way. I just got sent that one tweet earlier. <laughs> <laughs> I hate I, you. I, I just got sent that Wallow one tweet. Wallow pens and to the hip hop community. Wallow's absolutely right. Salute my guy Wallow. Okay, salute the Wallow. Philadelphia's finest, man. Love that brother. One Shout of the best motherfuckers representations in the culture we got. Love that man. Let's do some asking idiots, Taylor. Okay. No. Okay. Have you spent in girls' mouth before? 
Have I spit in a girl's mouth? Yeah. Yeah. Ew. What? <laughs> That's Is that disgusting. gross? Disgusting. I did that shit after you did like Kevin adult. Gates. Say again. You did like Kevin Gates. Hell yeah. That's disgusting. I have to pee so bad. Let's do two asking idiots. I gotta and then pee we too. Go. You wanna pee? And then no, come? no. Let's let's, let's okay. do it because I gotta. I Focused Polak. Oh Jesus! Wow. I don't think you can even say that. That's like a racial term for Polish people. It is. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, is self care just narcissism rebranded? No, no. That's the stupidest shit I've ever heard no, in my life. No, 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 no. Self care is self care. Narcissism is narcissism. Yeah, everybody those are deserves things. some self care. Absolutely. Take care of your motherfucking self. Go get your motherfucking, you know, go get you a pedicure. Go get you a manicure. Go get you a massage. Yeah. You know, go do some meditation. You know what I mean? I mean, narcissists definitely take advantage of self care for sure, but it's not narcissism rebranded. It is no. absolutely not narcissism rebranded. Um, scroll up because. Andrew's dick is bulging. Bulging right now. It's going crazy. Uh, My dick's ooh. going crazy right now. Milky Nine says, what motivates you to continue success after accomplishing big goals? Um, I think it's about the art. I think if, if it's just about the goals, and like meaning like making money or these types of things, then I think you lose focus on the art. But if you focus on the art and want it to get better at it and improve it and challenge yourself, then... That's the ultimate goal. So focusing on the art, getting better. Yeah, me too. You know what I mean? Because, you know, once you accomplish something, you know, the 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 the, the accomplishment is one aspect of it. Mm. The maintaining of it is another. And that's why, you know, when we have these conversations about the Drakes and the LeBrons and whoever, or even the Michael Jordans, the Jay-Zs, what we respect about these guys more than anything is the the, the longevity and the consistent domination mm -hmm. you know what i mean and even if you know in their later years you know they're not putting up the points that they used to you still can't take away who they are mm -hmm. what they did and they're still winning mm -hmm. like all of these people that we're talking about are still winning they're just winning in different ways jay-z wins in a different way he's not the guy that's just in the booth rapping anymore or putting out artists he's doing other things you know lebron's still on the court mm -hmm. but i think one of the reasons that we talk so much about lebron's off the court accomplishments is because we're intrigued by the fact this guy's been playing so long and has accomplished so much yep. off the court drake He's still playing. The reason Drake can still have all of this conversation around his name and everybody's still talking about him and stuff like that is because we're paying attention right. to him now. You know how hard it is to get people to pay attention to you after 13 years doing one thing? Almost impossible. Almost motherfucking impossible. Same thing with Michael Jordan. Michael Jordan, we, we watch his highlights and we're in awe. Mm -hmm. He's still the bar for every basketball player. Absolutely. And his business moves are unprecedented. So, you know, they've accomplished numerous things goals and they just keep moving so I, re I respect it to me after like the long story short after you accomplish your goal you know the longevity and consistency of how long you can be great is what I what I salute absolutely well, let's Amen do this last that. one it's 1990 what's the name of 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 Charlotte and Andrew's TV show it's 1990 mm-hmm Martin <laughs> <laughs> what it's a chips Ooh. Ooh. It might be brilliant idiots. You can't see that? Is it 1996? Oh, I thought they're like. Man, how you make up a name. Oh, I thought it's like, say what show would we be characters on or what uh, would be oh. our show? No, what's the name what? of our show? Yeah. Oh. Why do you say chips? Oh, because I, I was thinking black and white, but they weren't black and white, actually. No, Mexi. Mexican and white? Yeah. All right, no, hold on, hold on. Let's do this. Um, 1990. What is the name of our TV show? What was happening in the 90s, though? Would it be Lies Matter? <laughs> queers? Oh, queers. Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows you're gay. Dun, 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 dun. And they're always glad you're gay. Dun, dun, dun. You want to be with a... <laughs> that wouldn't be. You want to be where people Let's see. see. Buttholes are all the same. same. <laughs> you want to go where everybody knows you're gay. <laughs> Queers is filmed in front of a live studio audience. <laughs> As always, <laughs> if you listen to the podcast, you think we're smart, you think we're intelligent, you think we're brilliant, you're absolutely right. But if you think we're just a couple of idiots who don't know shit, you're right too. It's the Brilliant Idiots Podcast. Thank you for listening. Peace.